Let's get this uh, workshop started. It's a pleasure to be chair. I want to start with some thanks, first of all. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Porik for helping to organize this session, um, and of course the speakers for coming um, to tell us about their work, and obviously the audience. Um, but I thought I uh, could start the uh, workshop on open collaboration in computational neuroscience by just giving a little bit of a motivating um, uh, argument for why we need more open collaboration in computational neuroscience. So uh, many of you will be involved in developing uh, models of uh, neurons um, and synapses. <clears throat> And then perhaps fewer of you will be involved in m modeling uh, more large-scale networks. <clears throat> and then very few of you will be involved in modeling the whole brain. And this sort of illustrates a scaling factor that in the long term, we want to be able to have very detailed models of brain function um, at, at these sort of, uh, with this sort of detail. But we want to be able to model both networks and groups of networks and systems in order to really understand how the brain represents information of sensory systems, motor systems, and cognitive systems. Now, uh, traditionally, this uh, model development has proceeded in this rather linear fashion where you'd have a new PhD student in your lab or a postdoc um, who may use existing data or may generate experimental data themselves and then start to build a model to fit that data um, and th this whole process may take one or two years, depending on their ability and the difficulty of the problem, for building, for, a, for example, a single cell model. Now, this sort of uh, uh, approach doesn't scale very well because often, once the PhD student's finished, the uh, code uh, may be re released on a database like ModelDB, but is, is frozen and may not be reused. If we really want to build uh, a sort of modular approach to uh, modeling the brain, we need to come up with a better system for um, reuse of uh, model components um, and really building on what people have done before. So then the idea is to uh, actually to uh, collaborate together to build models and use open source type approaches um, in, or in order to do that. So this shows a, a uh, uh, a sort of cultural change in, in this uh, type of approach for model building in collaborative development. And that's what we'll be talking today and the associated neuroinformatics tools. And um, there are many benefits to getting together to build these uh, complex models. Um, uh, not only uh, continuity and building in a modular fashion, but also, uh, as we know from open source, you in the end get a much more robust product um, and uh, potentially, have, by having a lot of more people looking at a model, it's going to uh, be uh, to do its job much better. So, um, but what do we need to um, uh, go into a more collaborative mode? Um, well, uh, today we're going to have some examples, uh, just uh, some uh, of the um, things that are out there that can be used. So, if we start with the data. Um, there are data sets out there that you can download, Neuromorpho, and we're going to hear about Neuroelectro today. There are tools for collaborative model development, both the open source software, uh, software development tools, but also simulators, which have been, have been around for a, a while, uh, applications, um, and again, we're going to hear some of these today. But uh, also crucially important for um, building uh, the, comp the complexity of models and having this modular approach is to actually standardize the description of the uh, sub uh, uh, parts of the model. So if you have a, a synaptic model or a uh, neuronal model, you can then plug it in. So you need a common language, and there are a number of initiatives to uh, develop a common language uh, for computational neuroscience, and some of them are mentioned here. Um, and this also, uh, we have the um, uh, example from uh, systems biology, uh, which has shown us that this is actually a very, very effective uh, way forward. And uh, finally, uh, uh, we may be thinking about neuroinformatics, but we mustn't forget about the experimentalists. 
because ultimately the experimentalists know how the system works. They're intimately uh, versed in uh, the behaviors. And unless we can get them into this cycle of model development, uh, we're never going to get really realistic, robust models. So we need to combine these standardized model descriptions with um, uh, repositories that enable us or enable people who aren't familiar with coding to actually go into the model and see the details of the model and see how it behaves. And uh, these two initiatives, Open Source Brain and Open Worm, uh, are trying to do that, as well as uh, ModelDB as well now. And uh, BioModels is from Systems Biology. So what are the benefits of um, collaborative modeling? Well, obviously, I've mentioned scaling up model systems, um, co continuity of projects, um, improved community resources if we can reuse things, um, and uh, the development of an integrated tool chain and that making it much easier to build uh, models of, for example, neurons. But I think the most important thing is that uh, by taking this approach, we'll be able to actually improve the scientific value of uh, our computational models of the brain. And we can do that by improving reproducibility of the models, accessibility of the models, allowing experimentalists to really see whether the model is doing what the biology is doing, um, this portability, and obviously transparency. And reproducibility, unless we have reproducibility, it isn't science. So what are the difficulties, issues that may come up today? And uh, I think we should, uh, when the talks go through, we'll have some sp um, specific questions, but at the end we can discuss some of these more general issues. Neuroscientists is a competitive system. Neuroscientists don't share. So your uh, parents will have told you to share throughout your childhood, but um, uh, when you become a neuroscientist, you go back to being about three years old. <laughs> uh, vested interests. Can we change the prevailing culture? Um, there's a big investment in the tool chain. Um, and it's quite an arduous uh, job to build the tools. Now, how can we ensure quality of models? How can we uh, grade them? And uh, so will the efforts of the developers who are putting in all this effort into the tool chain, for example, be uh, rewarded within uh, an academic or mainly academic uh, system? And um, one for the actual uh, modelers themselves, are you ready to expose all of the warts of your model in a way that anybody can see them right away? So those are the things that are slowing us down. These are the benefits, and I think the benefits outweigh um, uh, by far. Most of the difficulties and issues are actually things that shouldn't be an issue. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, we've got a, a great lineup today. Um, I don't need to go through all of them. I think we should get um, uh, down to the people who are actually doing the work. And uh, we're going to have about uh, 15 to 20 minutes each. And then hopefully that will allow um, maybe uh, five or 10 minutes discussion, especially if people want to get involved in how to push collaborative modeling forward.